Welcome to part two of 3.1. In this video, we are going to be graphing the derivative given the graph of the original function f. So we can see that f here is a simple quadratic. It is actually x squared minus four. And we wanna actually graph its derivative. Now in order to do that, we have to understand again what the derivative means. The derivative is the slope, the instantaneous slope, the instantaneous rate of change. It's how our graph is changing at any given point. So we can note, the first thing that we want to note when graphing a derivative is when do we have a turnaround point, meaning when do we have like a minimum or a maximum. Down here we have our minimum, it's the vertex, at um, when x is 0, y is negative 4 down here. And if we were to graph the tangent line, it would be horizontal, meaning that the derivative when x is 0 is 0. So we know that the derivative when x is 0 is 0. The x values are the same here, but in this case the y values of f prime are what the derivative is at that point. So we first want to locate any turnaround points, meaning mins or maxes, and that's because they have horizontal tangent lines. The slope of the tangent line is the derivative. Now when we look to the left of that minimum, so when x is less than 0 all over here, we notice that our graph is decreasing. If we were to draw any tangent lines over here, such as the tangent line when x is negative 2, if I were to sketch that, and that was kind of poorly drawn, but it has a negative slope. If I were to draw the tangent line when x is negative 1, it has a negative slope. So all of our derivatives over here when our graph is decreasing, they are negative. Now note that this has a, this is a more negative slope than this slope right here. So this is more of a negative number than this one is here. Therefore, our slopes, even though they're negative, are slowly increasing until they become zero. So when we graph our values at negative two, our slope, f prime, is a smaller or more negative number than what f prime is when x is negative 1 until we eventually reach 0. So the slopes are going to all be negative but eventually go up to when we hit the origin. So let's figure out what the slope of this line is here just by using, um, just by kind of, you know, using our sketch of our tangent line here and figuring out rise over run. All right, I've cleaned that tangent line up a little bit and used the lines feature on here. So we can clearly see that this is one coordinate point on our tangent line, and then another point on our tangent line is down here. Um, let's say this is approximately negative one and a half comma negative two. So let's um, go from this point to this point and just see how much we rise negative and then run in the horizontal direction, just rise over run, but negative, because it's a negative slope. So it looks like we go down two, and over half. So if we want to think of that as a slope, we're going down to and over half, which means this is negative two times the reciprocal, so it's a slope of negative four. Therefore, the, the f prime, the value of the derivative when x is negative two, the slope of that tangent line, the derivative there, is down at negative four. So that's what we can plot to graph our derivative. Then I'm going to do the same thing and draw a tangent line when x is negative 1. Okay, I've drawn the tangent line here when x is a negative 1. So again, the tangent line hits at one point, and we draw a line that really only touches at that one point. It measures how our graph is changing, the instantaneous rate of change there. And it looks like from point to point, again, we're going down 1 and only over 1 half of a unit. So the slope there is negative 1 divided by 1 half. So it's negative 1 times 2 over 1, which is negative 2. So do this one in orange so we could just see. There we go. So, so far, what our f prime looks like is this. It looks like it's going to be linear. So our rate of change is changing, but it's changing in a constant way. So next, we want to take a look at where our graph is increasing. Let's take a look at where our f function, our original quadratic, is increasing. It's increasing when x is greater than 0. So all over here it's increasing. So therefore, all the rates of change f prime are going to be positive. The derivative is positive all to the right of the y-axis here. So again, let's find just two points and let's draw those tangent lines. All right, I'm going to draw the tangent line 
at the coordinate point 1 comma negative 3 and because of the symmetry of the graph it's going to just like be reflected over here so when I draw that line hopefully I'll show you kinda how I do this on here I just sort of sketch a line as best I can and it matches the shape not bad that actually looks okay um, so what we can do is sort of go point to point this is the coordinate point about a half and then down to negative 4 here so it looks like we're rising um, 1 and again running half so 1 divided by 1 half is 2 so I'm just finding the slope using the rise over run method so our, our instantaneous rate of change when x is 1 is 2 and that makes sense we're just continuing on our path what would we expect our our derivative to be when x is 2 well if we continue the pattern we'd expect it to be 4 so let's just see if that's the case I'll do this one in navy blue just so we can see it and then hopefully this will match the line I draw the tangent line that's pretty close Again, not exact, I moved it a little closer. Um, let's see if this slope is 4. It's a little harder to see, but this is the coordinate point 1.5 comma negative 2 on our tangent line, our blue tangent line, and we're rising 2 and running half. 2 divided by 1 half is 4. Remember, dividing by a fraction means multiply by that fraction's reciprocal. All right, so we just saw here, I'll make this all one color, and this continues on actually. Um, some of you might recall that when you found the equation of f prime, when you had an x squared, it turned into 2x. And that actually is the general way to find the derivative of a quadratic. Um, but some things that we followed here are when we had a turnaround point, a minimum or a maximum, that has a horizontal tangent line, meaning the slope of a horizontal line is zero, so the derivative was zero there. When our function was decreasing, our derivatives were negative values. These are all negative y values here, negative f prime. And then when our function was increasing, they had positive derivative values, so positive rates of change. Then we can also see that a quadratic its derivative is a line, a linear function. It goes down by one degree. Quadratic is x squared. A linear function is just x to the first or x. In this next example, we want to do the same thing. We want to graph f prime from its original graph f. This graph is a cubic function. It has three roots. And the first thing that we want to do is identify the turnaround points, which are the minima and or maxima. These are the points where the derivative is zero because the derivative either goes from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. It changes sign and therefore it hits zero when it changes that sign. Um, zero is the great divide between the positive and negative numbers. So we can see that we have a local maxima here and a local minima here. I don't know, that. well, I do know that it, those exact points. It looks like negative 0.6 and positive 0.6. Each one of these ticks is 0.2. So we identify those points first. And because they have horizontal tangent lines, their um, derivative value is zero. So we would draw a horizontal tangent line here. And this point also has a horizontal tangent line um, therefore, f prime of negative 0.6 is equal to f prime of positive 0.6, and they're both 0. So at negative 0.6, I put a 0, and at positive 0.6, f prime is also 0. Then we need to decide where is our derivative positive, and where is our derivative negative. All right, our derivative is positive where f is increasing. It has positive slopes here from you know negative infinity when x is negative infinity until negative 0.6. So what I'm going to do is kind of mark the graph here. So f prime is positive there and then also our graph is increasing from when x is 0.6 and beyond to positive infinity. So f prime is also positive over here. 
So f prime is positive, and f prime is positive here, greater than zero, because our function is increasing. So let's graph that. Let's see approximately what the value of the um, one of our slopes of the tangent line is there so we can properly graph it because all we know right now is that it's positive so it probably looks something like this. Let's see how close we are to that. Okay, I drew the tangent line in when x is negative 1 so I'm going to go from this point to about this point here. So it looks like we're rising point 8 and running point 4. So that is a slope of positive 2. So we need to plot at negative 1 we had a slope of positive 2 up there. And it looks like after that point, our graph is still increasing, but it's increasing less sharply, like in a less, um, the tangent lines would not be as steep here. They wouldn't have as positive of slopes until they eventually reach a slope of zero in between negative one and here, negative 0.6. So from here to here, we're slowly going down to zero. So I'm gonna graph that. Then, we can see that in between here, from negative 0.6 to positive 0.6, our graph is decreasing. Therefore, in between there, f prime, the derivative, is negative. It's less than zero. So f prime is going to live down here in between these two values. So it's going to look something like this and then come back up to here. Let's see why that is. Even though the function is decreasing in between here, it's decreasing at different rates. It looks like it's decreasing not too quickly here, and then it decreases very steeply, and then it decreases less and less and less until the slopes of the tangent lines even back out to zero. Let's find out the middle here at zero. Let's see how quickly we are decreasing. Let's find the slope of the tangent line at this point here, zero, zero. So I'm gonna put a point there, and I'm going to graph the tangent line as best I can. And I didn't quite get, get it too close. There we go. It's a little bit better. And let's see what the slope of that tangent line is. I'm going from this point here to this point here. It looks like we're going down 0.2 and to the right 0.2. So it looks like a slope of negative 1 when x is 0. So it's going to approach that, hit it, and then come back up to this 0 here. All right, that is where f prime is negative. All these values here are negative values. They're below the x-axis. Let's look to the right here of positive 0.6. Our graph here is beginning to increase again. Therefore, it has positive slopes. Let's see what the slope of the tangent line at x equals 1 is. So again, I'm going to plot that point and graph a tangent line as best I can. All right. I'm going to move that just a little bit. Okay, I moved it so it looks like a better tangent line. It's hitting just at that one point. So I'm going to go from about here to here. It looks like we're rising two blocks and running one block, so the slope is positive 2 here. Um, I'm going up 0.4 and over 0.2, so the slope is 2 there. So up here at x equals 1, our derivative increases to 2. And it slowly got there. When the derivative was 0 here, the derivative started to increase, 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 increase until they hit 2. And then they continue increasing as we go to the right of x equals 1. So they would continue on actually here and here. So if we notice, this is interesting, when we had a cubic function, an x cubed, our derivative was actually a quadratic function, x squared. The degree went down by 1 again. This function was degree 3, this function degree 2. This third example here is of a piecewise function. Yes, it seems strange, but this absolute value function is actually a piecewise. Um, over here, when x is less than 0, it is the graph of negative x, y equals negative 1x. And when x is greater than 0, it's the graph of positive x. So the, this is really, we'll call it f, and it's really a piecewise function. It's the graph of negative x when x is less than 0, and it's the graph of positive x when x is greater than or equal to 0. So that's all the absolute value function is. It's actually a piecewise, um, and they meet at the origin 0, 0. 
So this or equal to could go in either spot. All right, let's find what the graph of f prime would be. Well, these are both linear functions. What is the slope here? Well, the slope is, we could just look here, the slope is negative 1. You could also just count from point to point. We're falling 1, running 1 or rising negative 1, however you like to look at it, falling, running 1. The slope here is negative 1. What's the slope over here? The slope of this linear function, this is just mx plus b, right? The m is 1. We could go from point to point, point to point. Rise 1, run 1, rise 1, run 1. And so when we graph the uh, derivative, I'm actually going to write it out, f prime, would be negative 1 over here when x is less than 0. And I meant to do that in dark blue, whoops. And then the derivative here to the right of when x is 0 is positive 1. And I'm not going to put or equal to 0. And here's why. Our derivative does not exist at that sharp cusp in the center. We're going to talk about this more in the future, but when we have this sharp cusp and our derivative abruptly changes, it was negative 1 and then it abruptly changes to positive 1 at this point when x is 0, at the point 0, 0, our derivative does not exist. And therefore, our derivative does not exist when x is 0. So graphing it will look like there'll be an open circle there. When we graph this, here on the interval, our slope there was negative 1, and therefore f prime here was negative 1 on this interval here. So we graph that at negative 1, f prime was the, the value negative 1 until we hit when x was 0 and we put an open hole there. This is the graph of f prime. Then, in this interval over here, I'll do this in red, to the right of when x is 0, like we already have established, the slope was positive 1. Therefore, the derivative was positive 1 there. And our derivative here is positive 1 here. So we are showing that when we have a linear function, in this case this is a piecewise function made of two lines, two linear functions, our derivative is a constant. And our derivative does not exist at x equals 0 because the derivative abruptly changes. We have this sharp turn here. This next example is also piecewise linear with a few more pieces. We can see that in this interval here, in red, the slope is negative 2, therefore f prime of x here is negative 2. Then we can see in the blue interval between when x is 1 and when x is 3, so I'll make those little tick marks, it goes until when x is 1 over here, that's where that interval, and this one goes indefinitely to the left. In our blue interval, we can see that the slope there is 2, because we rise 2 and run 1, and therefore f prime there of x is 2. On the green interval, between when x is 3 and 5, it's a horizontal line, therefore the slope is 0, so f prime there is also 0. And then I could also write f prime of x, but I just don't have a ton of room, so that's the only reason I'm not writing of x like I did in red. Really no other significance to that. Okay, and then from when x is 5 to when x is 10, that's sort of orange. Our slope is, let's see, what is our slope? It looks like our slope's negative 1, because we go from point to point, down 1, right 1. Okay, our slope's negative 1, and therefore f prime, I do have room here, is negative 1. So those are all just constant functions. So let's graph those. So from x is negative infinity to when x is 1, our slope, our derivative is negative 2. And like we said in the previous example, 
our derivative does not exist at these sharp points here. So our derivative does not exist at x is 1. Our derivative does not, does not exist at x is 3, at x is 5 either. So we put the open circle there because our derivative abruptly changes at those points. It's not like a nice smooth flow. Between when x is 1 and when x is 3, I'll graph that part in blue, the slope or the derivative is a positive 2. So we put those two circles there. It's at positive 2. And between when x is 3 and x is 5, our derivative is 0 because that's a horizontal line. So we graph it at 0. Then between when x is 5 and x is 10, our slope is negative 1. So we graph it down there. Um, if it's an endpoint, you can choose to color it in only because you could argue that a one-sided derivative exists there. It would be totally fine if you kept this endpoint open or closed, but we have to understand that when there's a sharp turn, the function's not differentiable at those points because the left derivative and the derivative from the right, they don't match. Um, and therefore, when we have those sharp turns, we our derivative does not exist. You could argue that this is not a sharp turn just because there's nothing to the right of it, and that's why it's sort of an open-ended, like you could color it in or not. So that is graphing linear functions, in this case a linear piecewise. The absolute value is just another type of linear piecewise function. Here it's kind of putting some ideas together. When our function was a constant, meaning when it looked just like this, a horizontal line, what was the derivative? The derivative was 0. When our function was linear, and not horizontal, because you could argue that a constant is linear. When it was a linear function like this, and it had a slope that was not zero, its derivative was a constant. When we had a quadratic, when we had an x squared, something that made a parabola, our derivative was linear not horizontal. And we saw one other example. When our function was cubic, so it looked something like this. That was the second example, I believe. When our function was cubic, our derivative was quadratic. So what we're seeing is that when we have just a constant like the number 4, its derivative is 0. When we have linear, like just an x, its derivative is constant, just a number. When we have x squared, a quadratic, its derivative is linear, just an x. When we have a cubic, x to the third, its derivative is x squared. So it always is going down by one degree, one less exponent. In this next example, we have a fun trig function here. Uh, let's take a look. This is f of theta equals sine of theta, and we can see we have a nice sine curve here extending indefinitely um, left and right. All right, so let's really just take a look from when x is 0 to when x is 2 pi, one nice trip around the unit circle. And I want to first point out, when is the derivative 0? Meaning, when are we hitting like a maximum or a minimum? When is our function going from increasing to decreasing, or from decreasing to increasing? Because those tangent lines would be horizontal, aka f prime would be 0. And it looks like that's the case for pi over 2, because if we were to draw a tangent line here, its slope would be 0. And same with here at 3 pi over 2. The tangent line would be horizontal, meaning f prime is 0. And the derivative is the slope of the tangent line. So at pi over 2, f prime is 0. And at 3 pi over 2, f prime is 0. Now let's think about what is the rate of change, what's the derivative, as our function increases. Our derivative is positive from when x is 0 to when x is pi over 2 because our function is increasing. And of course, when our original function is increasing, f prime of x is positive. 
So between 0 and when x is pi over 2, so here and here, our f prime function needs to be living up here in the positive y world. Let's figure out what those slopes are by graphing, let's say, the tangent line at pi over 4. We just know it's a positive number. I need to know what that number is approximately. Okay, our tangent line here. There it is. So it looks like our tangent line goes almost through the point zero, zero, and it's very similar to our, our graph here. And let's say it goes to the point, you know, pi over four. Um, what is the sine of pi over four? It's root two over two, which is about 0.7. So it's approximately 0.7 there. So it looks like our slope of our tangent line here is about 0.7 over pi over four. And even though that's a really weird thing to do, I have my calculator, so I can do 0.7, right? Because I'm just doing rise over run, that's all. So we're rising about 0.7, and we're running pi over 4. And so I put this in my calculator, and I got approximately 0.89. All right, so we'll say about 0.9. That's our slope. So I'm going to label these as 0.25s. I figured out that these numbers are going to be relatively small and so I just found out that at pi over 4 my slope was about 0.9 so I'm about here this is x is pi over 4 and this is about 0.9 and all I did I just did rise over run it's okay that these numbers are a little bit weird it's all good. We still are just doing rise over run, and you have a calculator, so we can just plug it right in. The next thing I want to see is maybe what is the slope kind of in between pi over 4 and pi over 2, somewhere like right here. Okay, and we'll say that that value, uh, the value between pi over 4 and pi over 2, and that value is 3 pi over 8. Um, and then it's sine, I'm just using my calculator, the sine of 3 pi over 8 is about like 0.9. Okay, so we can clearly tell that the slope of this tangent line is way less steep. It is not as steep as the one through the tangent line at pi over 4, which is really steep. It had this slope here of 0.9. This one goes through uh, the coordinate point 3 pi over 8 comma 0.9 and the coordinate point pi over 2 comma 1. So we're only increasing about 0.1 and we're running, so we're rising 0.1 and we're running uh, 1 eighth of a pi from here to here. So to find the slope of that tangent line, again we're just approximating, the slope of that tangent line we rose 0.1 and we ran pi over 8, so I'm just going to use my calculator here, and we got about 0.25. Okay, so here we're at 0.25. So it looks like we have a pretty drastic decrease there. That's what's happening. And actually, I don't want to put an arrow there because this graph is cyclical, so I'm just going to start it like right around there. Okay, now I want to take a look at some slopes in between here. I want to take a look at what is the slope um, perhaps when we are at x is pi. Let's see where we need to plot that. So at x is pi, I'm going to draw the tangent line there. There it is. And we can clearly see that if I were to draw any tangent line between when x was pi over 2 and when x is 3 pi over 2, the slope of those tangent lines would be negative because our graph is decreasing. Let's take a look at two points that are approximately on this tangent line. It looks like we have a point approximately here, and we clearly have the point pi comma 0. And it looks like at 3 pi over 4, we're about at maybe like 0.8-ish. Okay, so from this point to this point, we have decreased or fallen 
or if you want to say risen, negative 0.8. So we've fallen 0.8, and we've ran 1 fourth of a pi, from 3 pi over 4 to pi. So let's find out what the slope is there. So we have negative 0.8 divided by 1 fourth of a pi, and we can put that into our calculator to see what we get. We get about negative 1.01, .01. so I'm just going to say about negative 1. So when we plot that, at pi negative 1. Now, is that the steepest negative slope that we could draw? Let's see. I'm going to draw a few other tangent lines here that would have negative slopes. So I'll draw one here. Doesn't look like its slope is as negative as the green. I'll draw one here. Again, doesn't look like our slope is as negative as the green. It's not as steep. Um, when x is pi, that is actually the steepest negative slope that we will have, like the most negative. And then we can see that our graph doesn't have as quite of steep drops after or before pi here and here. So let's find maybe two more slopes in between there. All right, I've drawn in the tangent line at 3 pi over 4 here. Again, approximating. So it looks like we have... A couple points on this line, we have this guy, pi over 2, comma like maybe 1.2 or 1.3. Then we have this point here in between pi and 5 pi over 4. And then I also drew in the tangent line at 5 pi over 4. I wanted to show that these two tangent lines are actually parallel. I tried to draw them as best I could, but that's because of the cyclical nature of sine and how it repeats every 2 pi. Anyway, if we wanted to find the slope of this tangent line here at 3 pi over 4, which is the same as at 5 pi over 4, we can again do fall over run. And so here, the sine of 3 pi over 4, again, is the same as the sine of pi over 4. It's approximately 0.7, root 2 over 2. Um, I know this because I just know it, but you can take a look at your unit circle to see what it is. So we're falling 0.7, and we're running from 3 pi over 4 to what is this coordinate here between pi and 5 pi over 4? It's 9 pi over 8. So we're traveling 3 eighths of a pi horizontally. Um, just some fraction math there. So the slope of that tangent line is we're falling about 0.7 and we're running 3 eighths of a pi. And so when you put that in your calculator, you get about 0 0.6, 0 0.59, negative 0 0.6 rather. And so our slope at both 3 pi over 4 and at 5 pi over 4 is about negative 0 0.6. So it's about here and here. So we can sort of fill in the gaps in between here. And it looks something like that. All right, so when our function be was decreasing, so between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, when f of x is decreasing, f prime is negative because we had negative rates of change here. All our tangent lines were sloping downward. They had negative slopes. These are all those negative slopes down here. This is graphing the f prime, all of the slopes. And so I'm just going to finish up real quick over here. It's actually the exact same as what we just did over here because again of the cyclical nature of sine and I don't want this to go on too much longer but we will increase approximately the same amount here and so it's an interesting idea um, if we were to actually continue the graph the this graph here, f prime, we would actually be graphing cosine. And that's something cool that we'll discover soon is that the derivative of sine is actually cosine. 